Library TV. I am your host, Gary Vayner Chuck. And this, my friends, is The Thunder Show, AKA the internet's most passionate wine program. And I'm in Arizona making fun of every Cardinals fan because we know what the Jets did to the Cardinals. But as you can see, I have some pimp ass guests today on The Thunder Show. Go Lions. So, oh, Lions fans. <laughs> no. And uh, I'm very excited. A lot of people have been requesting this show for about three years now, and we've pulled it off, Vaniacs. Uh, I'm very excited about this. So, gentlemen, left and right, why don't you tell the Vaniacs who you are and what we're doing here? You first. Oh, come on. No, you first. I'm Eric, Eric, Eric Lom- yeah, yeah. It's gorgeous. Yeah, thanks, man. Uh, Eric Lomsky, I'm the owner of Page Spring Cellars. Um, Maynard and I co uh, vent um, Arizona Stronghold Wines, and I've kind of had a little bit to do with Maynard's project, Caduceus. And I'm Maynard. There you have it. Oh, you're cool like that, right? You can just be like, yo, yeah. right. you're like chef. If it. you don't know who I am by now, <laughs> <laughs> So, um, Maynard's obviously a rock star for I'm real, which is weird ask. to say, um, and, uh, and also passionate about wine and has brought a lot of attention um, to the Arizona scene. These guys are pulling off a, a, a really big coup. You know, I always end my show with you, with a little bit of me, we're changing the wine world. Well, these guys are really changing the Arizona wine world. Though Callahan was the first brand that really hit my radar even a decade ago when I first started learning about wine for Arizona, these guys have really brought it to the national attention. Obviously leveraging some personal brand equity, but by making quality product, or so I hear, because I'll be very honest with you, as cool as these guys are, I'd be thrilled to score every wine here a seven. <laughs> it could happen. I doubt it, but it could happen. It could so, happen. So why don't you, you guys- make it out of your lives. Uh, that's very possible. <laughs> um, Scale one to five. Right? Yeah, right, right. <laughs> Why don't you tell these guys, the Vaniacs out there, how you first got into wine, a little two minute, how you got into wine, a little two minute, how you got into wine, why you're doing this, why you have your winery. We are at Page here, right? We're, we're at Pig Springs, Springs yep. Winery here. It's yep. gorgeous, completely middle of nowhere. I mean, this is awesome town. Um, and there's like Cornville or something, Cornyville. McCain right? Country. McCain Country. So why don't you tell uh, the Vaniacs how you got into wine. Obviously you had an influence on Maynard, um, mm-hmm. so you've got probably some more of the background. I'm not even sure myself, I'm enjoying it. Yeah, I mean, Break really it down. Pretty, pretty simple. Um, I used to live over in Prescott, which is a little, a little west of here, and I was a college instructor in ecology, you know, to me, which is like of s- studying terroir. Yeah. You know? And um, I um, started making wines from heirloom apples that, from old abandoned orchards throughout central Arizona. Because you wanted to get drunk? No, I just, you know, I made beer. You're like one of those dudes. No, I met this crazy old guy named Dick Landis. He's a weaver. He has weavings in the Smithsonian. This is going to be the best and, episode and, of all and, time. And, he, was, and he's a, he was a winemaker. And, Where is this man, yeah, Dick? Dick's in Prescott. Yeah, guys, after this, guy. we need to find this guy. You should. You'll episode love with him. him. He's, he's like 80 years old. He's gay. Completely insane. He's, no, he's, he's totally insane. And you, you should see his artwork. And, and they're in the Smithsonian, too. So he's like this strange little hobbit-like guy out there hanging out. And he made is he, like, <laughs> is he Is he like a cult hero? Totally. Like the people that know him are like this. Oh, yeah, like, yeah. He's like Yoda. Yeah, big time. Yeah, okay. Yeah, you have to seek him out, though, and go hang out in the swamp. And, yeah. yeah. He's, uh, he's a really <laughs> amazing. And he, he he, uh, swamp. He's like, make apple wine myself. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You know, and he made me stand him, you know. <laughs> um, anyway, you know, neat Crushed guy. He, ins- he really inspired me. And he, he, uh, he calls himself a sensualist. And he just said, look, life is all about the senses. What better job can we do than educating our senses? So I latched on that immediately. And uh, I started hiking out to these remote places and backpacking out heirloom apples and making wines out of them. And uh, I'd freeze them and actually press them frozen so I could get more viscosity out of them, more sure, sugar, sure, of course. Sure. And uh, you're making one, dessert wine. Yeah, exactly. One thing led to another. I started uh, taking off my fall semesters. I started volunteering at Harvest in California, um, and then I landed a job at David Bruce Winery, cool. um, working my way up from cellar, you know, rat to co winemaker over five, six years. And uh, but I always wanted to come back to. And Arizona. what years were that? That was mid '90s to. So really, when David Bruce started exploding with the whole. Oh yeah, I was there. Man, we went from like twenty thousand to eighty thousand cases in like yeah, four years. Like it, it was, was hot the and Central fast. Central Coast Petite and Pinot, be- yeah. Best Buy and yeah, Spectator. Sure. It got it was, crazy. Yeah, it was awesome. It but was, you wanted to come home. Yeah, I was like, you know, what I want to be another winery in Arizona. I don't want to go on a frontier. Mm-hmm. And I, as an or ecologist. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. and uh, just another e- winery in Arizona. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Amongst and, the other twenty. Well, and as a co- an ecologist, <laughs> I knew that Arizona had microclimates that were ideal for grapes. You know, there's a lot of Mediterranean climates here. Yep. So I came back, helped a guy named John Marcus get started up. Um, he has Echo Canyon Winery up the road here, mm-hmm. right over by McCain. And uh, one day, Maynard dropped in. And so that's my brief. Maynard, take it, take it over. So you're a I'm massive, sure he has a, a you're a massive rock star, that, and you're know? like, oh, wine. 
Uh, no, actually, it started when I was living in Boston, working at a pet store, mm -hmm. uh, and a friend of mine worked at, on the, in the north end of Boston at an Italian wine shop. And then, you know, on the weekends, we'd get together and have little barbecues, and he would bring these wines over. And and uh, at, at the time, I had no frame of reference. I had I had no real interest in getting into wine, but I could tell that there was something to it. And then shortly after, all of a sudden, music just kind of happened for me, and on the road, and being exposed to fantastic wines uh, around the world. Uh, and then somehow just ended up in Jerome because I had a dream I was supposed to be here. Kind of followed my nose, ended up in Jerome, Arizona. Physically you had a dream? Yep, had a dream. In the dream, I, uh, it, it's amazing. Like, it looked like uh, this, this small town and I'd been to Arizona, I'd been to Phoenix, been to Flagstaff and had no interest in moving to Arizona. And a friend of mine, Tim Alexander, a drummer for Primus, said, uh, I gotta show you this little town then. Let me show you where I used to live. And he brought me to Jerome. And uh, I immediately changed over my driver's license and registered my car and rented an apartment and looked for a house. So you grew up in Boston? No, I grew up in, in Michigan. So you are a Lions fan? Yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> I'm actually in the room with Cardinal and Lion fans, people that are actually sadder than Jet fans. This is a tremendous feeling. So, so <laughs> sorry, I'm just so happy. Um, so, you, so the Italian wines got you into it. You started yeah. learning about the Italian well, wines. Well, you know, I started, you know, kind of getting, getting, getting into uh, into wines. Like I said, looking off the back deck, looking at the landscape, going, this looks like some of the places I've been around the world that, that, that make wine. So I started digging holes, ran into him, planting grapes. He just walked then, into a winery one day. He just rolled up and. And then, and then, a, then a, uh, a distant cousin of mine, uh, while I was planting vines, goes, you know, your great grandfather had vineyards and made wine in northern Italy, right? And I said, no, I didn't know that. And that's where really, yeah, that's, that that's was like, really where it yeah. came from. I think the vision of what Jerome looked like and this landscape looked like was basically him coming through me, going, "We got to get you back to the roots, out of L.A., get you back into the into the field." And wh what year was that? Uh, when I started planting, yeah, uh, 03, with digging holes mm -hmm. in 02 and 03. And you just knew you wanted to make wine, mm -hmm. and that's it. Yeah, you rolled Fair in, you it off, you know. We, High five, yeah, played ping pong. Foosball, I'll never darts. forget that gal. It was kind of your car. You finally remember? Her. She looked like remember the, uh, X Men, the female Wolverine. Female Wolverine? Yeah, there was a female Wolverine. It's good to be the king. <laughs> she had this like black leather suit on. I'm like, what? You know, I'm like, <laughs> like what's walking going around. On? You know, she's exaggerating. All covered in dirt and have printers. You know, she didn't have leather on. She did. Fur. She's wearing paint. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's get into these wines. We've got six wines to taste. I can feel this is going to be a two-parter already. Okay. Um, we're starting with Perrier water. Yeah, we'll let Perrier water. I'm just going to pour that for you. There, back in the day, in the... Let me take this, Clint, just zoom in on this. This is Perrier, <laughs> lot of... Are we uh, going to for this? Yes, yeah, no, you're going to jail. Not at all. Um, Big shout out to Clintus who's taping this. Mott, when we get home, we need to link up this man. This is the man for video. If you're in Phoenix, we'll get into that later. So tell me what this is. Okay, so back in the day in Jerome, there were some there were some miners, and they uh, one of the main wow. miners had hired a, a, a Spanish gentleman to come over and make wines for him in in the in the northern Arizona in the Jerome area. Uh, that Spanish gentleman had married a, a Mexican woman. Um, and uh, uh, stammering. Um, basically, people didn't know that people actually made wine in, in Arizona. This is us piecing these little stories together. You know, cut to years later, no vineyards, no miners. This little Mexican woman and her sister living on the corner of this little building in Jerome. One single vine growing up the side of their house. Turns out it was a surviving vine from when her oh, this deceased really husband weird. made made wine back in the day. We took cuttings of it, we planted them, we sent them to UC Davis. True story. No genetic record of what this is. So nobody knows what this is? Nobody knows what it is. So, so we can name it. it. I've named it Aurelia. Can we rename it? <laughs> we can name it Gary if you want. I was hoping. <laughs> this is my big shot. Gary so you selection. named it after her? Aurelia, which is uh, Spanish for golden. So the UC can't DNA it? Can't DNA it. I don't know what it is. Yeah. So is it could very well be native because there were there've been native grapes here for thousands of years. The, the indigenous peoples grew grapes. You definitely here. get you know you definitely like if I if I was just to smell it and this is is this what is this in barrels still or is this, this a finished product? Two, I have two gallons of it. I harvested <laughs> it and hand, you drink it like out of a water I, bottle. I hand crushed it in a kel in a colander and now it is in two glass one gallon carboys. So there's only there's we only took two gallons from it, which we're cult starting to cultivate down south too to potentially expand you know the, the crop. This is pretty cool. This is this is legacy. Yeah. Um, it has an al it has, a, it has an yeah. Albarino kind of component to it when you smell it. At this point, I wonder you know if it's got any ties to that way back. 
And also Laredo, a little bit like, you know, a little Portuguese action kind of. Let's give it a shot. So what is this? Is this an actual product or no? Not no. yet. It, it will be called Aurelia. It'll be a Caduceus wine. This, this is Maynard's first solo winemaking venture, completely by himself in his garage. This is a real garage wine. Hmm. Out of a Perrier bottle. How, how long is it? You picked this in like October or something? Mm -hmm. or? No, I know. This is August. Okay. Oh, early. This really does have a you know, a classic real Lorero, Vino Verde meets Alberino kind of component. It's definitely giving me that kind of vibe. It's got good acid, but not crazy levels of acidity. So it's kind of easy to drink, but it is really a food play. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is not the kind of white wine that a lot of people are going to be like, let's porch it up. Right. And, you know, no, this, this is, is gonna be a com point. this has complexities to it. I mean, tough to score at this point because it's so all over the place. Obviously, I've never had really anything like it unless I'm shocked. I'm, I mean, that's pretty cool that they can't figure it out, and you get to name it. I'm into that kind of stuff. <laughs> Can we go do some more <laughs> hanging around out here? I need a Vaynerchuk uh, clone. Um, so, but tremendous Did complexity. You say Vaynerchuk. Yeah, Vaynerchuk. Yeah. Um, we'll we'll co name it. Oh, I like that. Um, really good complexity. Good good wine. I mean, you know, if he sells it for like four or five bucks, we should all buy a ton. Is that what you're thinking? Suggested retail? Yeah. Probably a little different. One of those two hundred. <laughs> In the uh, per <laughs> sip, right? Very interesting stuff. This has, this is really neat. This is a real, real curveball and a lot of fun. Good way to start a show. Let's get into the uh, first wine. Uh, Quintus is going to have to use his zoom in skills to see uh, if he can hold up to the Mott pedigree. So this is the Arizona Stronghold 2007 Tazi white wine. This is your joint venture. Yep. <coughs> Tell me about this uh, project. Go for it, Eric. Um, you know, essentially when we when we purchased those cabezas, do a little. Uh, yeah, a little rinse action. Yeah, a little rinse action. Um, when we purchased the vineyard, there were um, varietals there that we weren't positive or really suited for the site. Um, there was Riesling, Sauvignon Blanc, um, which we were kind of questioning, and there was Chardonnay, Malvasia, and Viognier. And I remember thinking, God, you know, I'm looking forward to grafting over that that Riesling and Sauvignon Blanc. But the first year we're there, like, you know, let's harvest, let's feel it out, and see what the place has um, has to offer. And lo and behold, Riesling, which at the beginning of harvest, right after making, I was like, ah, oh, this stuff's so strange. It ended up developing this incredible orange, citrusy, kind of mandarin quality. Mm -hmm. a, a nice texture, oily texture to it. The Sauvignon Blanc had a lot of varietal character. And um, the Chardonnay was very Burgundian. And the reality is this site's 4,300 feet, so it's actually quite cool. And, um, you know, everybody, whenever I talk to them, they go, oh, you're growing wines in Arizona. They picture sand dunes and, sure. you know, cactus. cactus. Yeah, exactly. You know, yeah. This is high desert. So anyway, Tazi, Cochise's eldest son, okay, the peacemaker of the family, um, we wanted to make a, a great white wine that had good acid, was good with food. We're definitely more focused on food because we both like to eat. Italian guys. Yeah, you know, we like food. And uh, yeah, you know, we exercise too. He likes food more than me. Oh, hey, <laughs> singer! Hey! Um, so this is a, a really eclectic blend. It's actually primarily Riesling and Sauvignon Blanc. A little bit of shard for Yeah, I for see it. Let me break it down for yeah, a minute. It's 34% Sauvignon Blanc, 33% Riesling, 17 shard, and 16% uh, Malvasia. I mean, really a pretty unique and interesting blend. Yeah. What is yeah. the suggested retail of this wine? Uh, 17 dollars 17 yeah. 18 yeah. bones, okay. Yeah. Yeah, you know, you, you'll see it out there for six dollars you'll see it for yeah. 20 I mean, if Wine Library sold it, would be like yeah. eight ninety nine. Yeah, there you go. Or something like that. All right, let's give it a snippy sniff, man, because that's what we do. So obviously, this is a very different, interesting, uh, aromatic experience, which all of you know out there, I'm a huge fan of bouquet. I think the majority of people out there are underappreciating the nose of a wine. I get a lot of complexities of fruit. Actually, you know, there's a lot of kind of uh, orange peel going on here on the nose, which I like quite a bit. There's also a little bit like, so weird. I get a little bit of like potato skin on the nose, and I can't completely put my finger on it. It's also a little cold, so I want to it warm it up a hair. Yeah. This, yeah. this definitely does a, a huge shift as it as it as it warms up, which is why I always love white wine at room temperature. But you definitely get you know orange peel coming through on this. Um, I get it quite heavily actually. There's a clear citrus component thing going on. I also get a little hint of mango on the back end, which I like quite a bit as well. There's this potato skin thing that I cannot explain, but I will figure it out. Let's give it a whirl. I 
Amanda, what's your take on this wine? To me, this is you know light to medium bodied, and very orangey and and like floral in the mouth. Once again, food wine. Yeah, it just really goes well. It's, it's shellfish. Probably, yeah, you know, like Absolutely. like oysters, a right? Scallop, a scallop dish with mm -hmm. uh, you know like a brown butter. Mm. You like that? Huh? Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, to me, this is a play for a lot of people that have been really excited about um, Greek wines. I, I get a little bit of that Greek wine component coming through in this wine. It's got good mouthfeel. It's a medium to light bodied wine. Very crisp, very clean. Um, has good like blue stone components. It's actually pretty funny. It has Alsatian like characters, has some Italian white type characters. It really does bounce all over the place a little bit on my palate. Um, it's a little bit short on the mid palate, but it's also cold, so I'm having a little bit of a tough time. Yeah, once it warms up, the mid palate really opens up. That's what they all say. No. <laughs> but I do love the acid of this wine. At the end of the day, Wine fans are addicted to acid. That's what pairs them with, you know, food. And I really feel like this wine has that complexity. To me, it falls into that 87, 88 point type wine. Probably giving a point higher than I normally would because we're here, dudes, you know what I mean? But a solid effort and definitely a clear indication. You know, to me what gets me passionate, you know, I always talk about the other 46. The states that produce wine that aren't California, Washington, Oregon. I don't even know why I throw New York in a little hometown love. But the other 46, when people taste this wine, if this was a blind tasting with sommeliers or people that really understood wine or just you out there drinking that likes wine, you know, this is what makes me happy because people are like, oh, you know, this is a, you know, wine from California or wine from Italy. They would never think that it's wine from a different place and that's what gets me excited that places around the country, clearly Arizona is getting a lot of hype. The whole Arizona, New Mexico, Baja, California, Mexico, uh, yeah. there's some serious stuff going yeah. on there. This part of the world is starting to produce interesting wines. This is another example of, this is not, you know, swill. That unfortunately so many people think these other states are producing that kind of quality. I mean, you guys are battling that every day, I'm sure. Yeah. Oh, when Nightbomb first planted in Napa, everybody gave him a hard time. You know, and then when people come out here from Napa and go, oh, you know, Arizona. Cool. They just made a movie about how much underdogs, yeah. you know, California was. All right, so what are we doing? We're waiting for. I'm, I'm getting. We're getting another bucket. This is clearly too cold as right. well. Right. So this Melvacia is 100% Melvacia. Very cool. It's so delicious when it's. Let's talk about it before. Yeah. Let's talk about it. We'll zoom in and then we'll talk about it. So this is 100% Melvacia. Is this? Do you feel like it? It grows great here. Is this a little bit of the Italian play? Where does the Melvacia play? Come in on this Page Springs 2007 uh, Malvasia, only 175 cases uh, produced. Yeah, we actually call the wine Vino de la Familia Blanca, so white wine for the family. Sure. Um, yeah, retail, you know, twenty dollars. Thanks, Corey. Twenty U.S. Uh, thanks, Corey. Yeah, that's way better. Big shout out to Corey. Yeah. Um, What's up, Corey? You know, Malvasia to me, it, you know, I think probably, section, probably with Maynard as well. I think this is the great for Arizona in the future as far as whites go. Um, it's it's amazingly expressive. Wait till you get it in your nose. It's uh, extremely floral, unique fruit characters, has great acid. Um, it's just a phenomenal wine and it grows well. The vines do well. They they crop very I reasonably. I think you'll, you'll enjoy it. It's I'm a huge Malvasia fan. I mean, I, I've definitely been a fan of the grape for a long period of time. California's real play at all ever was Wild Horse. Yeah. They were really the guys that kind of yeah. hit it out of the park for a little while. Um, but it's a very intriguing grape bridal that I think is totally under the radar. And if it is true that it does well here, this I agree with you then, if it has potential here and it does well, yeah. once people start tasting this, right. once you start tasting what the Malvasia grape can do, this could be really the bellwether grape that brings attention mm -hmm. to this area. Is that something that you guys are conscious of and trying to oh, yeah. get we're, that message we're out? We're planting this left and right. Wall Street Journal got excited about wow, it. This has a great news. Yeah, we just can't. This is this is. Do you get a little? Do you get a little like pine needle, like a little fo like a forest action here? Yeah, a little here? spruce action. In yeah, there. yeah, absolutely. I get a little star fruit coming through here, a little pear. There's also again, what I always love about Melissa, you're always gonna get a little of that citrus action. Mm -hmm. You know, like you know, mandarin as you brought up earlier, no question. Tangerine action. You getting anything else in the nose? Oh, yeah. It, yeah, and it's it, the you know the beauty beauty of this wine is it smells like it's going to be this big syrupy sweet palate. Yeah. No question. Then you get it in your mouth, completely different. No yeah. question. This wine comes across on the nose. It's a great point. A little muscati, where you really feel that you might be getting a dessert wine. And so uh, uh, I'm excited about trying this. Let's see what's going on here.
there's this classic herbaceous green kind of thing going on on the back end, which I like quite a bit. Um, really great um, mouthfeel, good lusciousness. You know, this has a little more oomph to it than I would have even expected, yeah. actually. It's got a lot of mint palate. Yeah, it's not, I, I love this. It has weight. Yeah. yeah. You know, it's got viscosity. Yeah. And this kind was, of the reason you froze the apples. Exactly. You know, this was in, this was in stainless and then <laughs> neutral oak, no oak whatsoever. And, uh, 100% we, stainless. Yeah, we do inhibit malolactic on it to, to try to keep that the citrus in there and the freshness. Yeah. Yep. You know? How do you like this stuff? But this, this, this to me is what really set the hook for me for the Arizona wines. These are from, this is from the Arizona Stronghold Vineyard down in Wilcox, uh, previously farmed by Todd Bostock, who had a Dos Cabezas wine work with him mm -hmm. at the wine yep. label. Yep. And that's that same vineyard that he was working with. But yeah, Todd was the winemaker there, El Buell farmed it. Right, yeah. This has really great richness. This is a very solid bottle of wine. You know, I'm going to score this 89 plus points. I think this has real complexities. Only 175 cases. Tell the, the fans out there, they love the business side. Where does that fall? I mean, are you selling everything out of this winery? Yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, this, we. Do you, uh, with the Arizona laws, are you allowed, you're not allowed to ship your wine to customers around the country, or we, you are? We different can. states. As, yep, as different long states. as our state laws mesh with yep. theirs, we can do it. So, so you've got some. We're sold out of this right now, but, yep. but we'll have more probably early April. And, and you have a mailing April. list? Uh, we have a wine club, and we, and we will have internet sales up in December. Got it. So, do you have um, a website where people can sign up for the yeah, wine club? PageSpringSellers.com. Okay. Ma, yeah. link it up. <laughs> um, Arizona. I like this. I like this. This is very good. Shows a lot of promise to me. Um, how was the 07 vintage? Was it a little hotter than normal? Um, you know, Just we, really, we really only have. You know, a small handful of vintages Cook. under our belt. I would say, if we looked at the last three years, 06, 07, 08, 07 was the warmest. Yeah, because, and the reason I ask that is, it feels like there's a little love handle to it. Just a little, like, I feel like the heat might, you know, just shot up right the sugar. Just, yeah. just, just a hair. That's why I got that 89 plus instead of that 90. Right. Listen, so I, don't good. Control, I don't control the weather. You have right? to try the 08. Cooler. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> All right, let's move on. All right. What do we got here? That is uh, the vineyard right outside. The, uh, the windows here um, is our our first Sprints. estate vineyard. Okay. And we have uh, four Rhone varietals planted: Syrah, Petit Syrah. This Grenache, is the 07 Grenache. landscape. Yeah. So this is a blend, a awesome. field blend of Syrah and Petit Syrah. So you pick it together. Yes. Field blends just yep. mix it all together. Yeah. Old and, school style. Yep. And this is farmed organically as well. So you know this we have total control over this vineyard we, from. Planting to now. So you don't bring, oh, you do. 55% uh, percent of it is Syrah yep. and Petit Syrah. Blend it together, and what's the rest? No. Or it's 50, 50 oh, it's a 50 40. 50, I'm sorry, 50, yeah, yeah. got it. Or it says 50 50 blend. Okay, there you go. <coughs> yeah. 55 <laughs> And what's the uh, suggested retail this? Uh, you know, <laughs> you know it, that's, see how there's a little, little red stamp on there? We sell that to our membership only. And, you guys uh, are exclusive. Up you know, and, and in all honesty, I know I should know this. Velvet rope. It's it's probably it's probably our members are probably paying about high seven hundred. Yeah, probably high twenties for it. Like that. So, are you are you in, inspired by the Rhone Valley? Do you like Rhone Valley wines? Are you shut up the pop like, drinker? I definitely you, like a. You like a little Jiganas? He, but he's more the Rhone. Yeah, yeah, I mean. Are you hardcore? I, that's, like you want to drink Lirac yeah. for the rest of your life? Oh well, yeah, I mean Cote Roti. Yeah. Contru. I mean, sure. come on. Yeah. yeah. All right, let's give it a snippy sniff. Nice aromatics on this too. A lot of you know black cherry coming through. You know, this is a really young wine. You know, but we wanted to show you something from our site, right? Sure. There, I mean, you know? that, you're pretty pumped about that. Yeah, yeah being definitely. A state, sure. Yeah, it's like you control it. Yeah, it's your baby. Good fruit. I, I get a. I get an interesting kind of like melted down fruit roll up component. So like take 25 cherry fruit roll ups, put them in the microwave to a meltdown component, and that's what I get on this nose, and I like it. Maynard? I'm not partying with you. No? It's that's done. crazy. Roll ups in a microwave. <laughs> that's too intense for you. <laughs> it's, a, it's a good time. I'm sure so many of my fans have been asking <laughs> to get you on the show. In the, in the, uh, in the rock and roll world, you, you mentioned. Um, are there pe other people in the scene that are into wine? Do you have uh, other peeps that you hang it's, in that are into, uh, you know, I know Vince Neal's no. making a wine, for example, in California. Obviously a little <laughs> bit different. I know that's your boy. Um, 
Salad, salad dressing? Uh-oh. Oh, hey, whoa, slow down. So, um, but are there, are, there serious, are, there serious, uh, are there serious wine guys in more, the scene? Uh, more, uh... Because I'm sure once you start to get this press... Support element, group. So, like, sound men, production guys, yep. uh, accountants. Those guys are more... Uh, accountants, the, for sure. Yeah, the wine kind of source. Uh, as, far as, as, as far as the Front rock stars, the mm-hmm. band members, not, not so much. They... That, you know, they, Any? Because like, I figured once you start to get there's a sorry. few. You know, you know, you know, right you know, they're not really, they're not really yeah. super serious about it. They're yeah. not like really going. I mean, this is what you want to do. Yeah, this is this for me. This is the rest of your life. This is, yeah, this is this is a retirement. You don't want to own the Detroit Lions. Not yet. Oh, yeah. and ten. <laughs> <laughs> Are they going to win a game this year? I hope not. Perfect <laughs> season. Oh, and sixteen. <laughs> they want to have a perfect season. So this is very fruit forward, uh, Rome style. Like you would have definitely in a blind tasting think this is California Syrah, or Petite Syrah, no doubt about it. Uh, let's give it a whirl. Hmm. Good ripe fruit, but pretty dark on the back end. I like this really, you know, high level of like dark chocolate. Um, I get really nice soft tannins. I, I definitely get a floral rose petal-y kind of component on the palate. Mm-hmm. You picking up anything else? Um, you know, knowing how this wine has evolved, there's a little bit of salt, you know, reduced sulfide in there mm-hmm. that gives it that chocolate character. Mm-hmm. So, I, so I get a little bit of like a tarry, dusty edge around it that I still notice from when it was really young. Yeah, there's definitely a chalkiness. Mm-hmm. Is this the one we were combating that that over? Yeah. Thing. yeah. What happened? Well, you know, we're organic, and, right. and you can use elemental sulfur in organic practices. Right. You know, it's just raw sulfur. Yep. And at the very bottom of the Syrah block, at the end, um, apparently the, the sulfur mixture wasn't mixed that well, so a, a one row got a lot of sulfur on it. <laughs> so then there's this sulfur in the wine, you have to deal with it. Yeah. You know? um, I don't think That's it's always fun. Yeah, yeah. You love so, it. You so know, it was definitely smell. a challenge to try to like navigate. Get Throw it back. Yeah, out luckily, my, not having that completely affect it. Yeah, there, and there's ways to deal with it. And, and what and, were some of the things you did? Um, well, sulfur is volatile, so um, meaning that it has weak molecular bonds. Bonds. So yep. If you splash it, it blows off. So there's a lot of more. Like usually, we just do punch downs. We do small open top fermentation. But you were like throwing this thing around. Absolutely. You know, in some ways that actually softened up the palate more. Yeah, you know, it, it did some nice things for it. You know, maybe we might do that every year. <laughs> That's how you guys built up these huge guns. The guns. Yep. <laughs> Um, classic style, good richness. Um, really, what? If, do you say this might be in the twenties or do you say forties? Uh, um, the you're not uh, sure because it's club member. Our, yeah, our members are probably paying high twenties, low thirties for this. And that's a little bit of a value play for where Syrah and Rhone varietals have gone, especially in the California scene. Uh, to me, um, I'm probably still most excited about the Malvasia. I just think there's a lot of potential now. Now that was 175 cases produced. Yes. Is that a program that you see growing quite a bit? Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Um, this then what's the production on this guy? Uh, we did about 100 cases. Uh, this. That's this yeah. little red stamp, right? Um, good fruit reminds me quite a bit of um, Elise uh, in Napa's Syrah program for some reason. Their Petite Syrah white label. Um, I, I like the fruit. I like the cherryness. I love the floral component. I think it brings an edge to it. It's definitely more new world. This is not a you know classic Rhone style. It's not that dark. There's definitely either the terroir it's because it's young or developing vineyard. You're not picking up as many pepper and leathery kind of components yet. Is that, do you think that that's where it could go? Yeah, you know, it's funny. I really thought about pouring you this other Syrah from our Norte vineyard, and it's all of it. it's so rhone like and the higher acid, serious black pepper. That's where you made a huge mistake. I I'm gonna score this wine 89, but I'm gonna score the other one a 91. There we Just go. Just saying. <laughs> all right, let's move on. Slight unseen. <laughs>